This is the Audi e-tron, the first all-electric Audi model that will also play a significant role in the electric vehicle sales. And we on Autogefuel, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with Thomas, are going to take a deep look on the exterior, interior and also the prospect of driving. We're calling you out from San Francisco, a very forward-moving city, also with a rich heritage of non-combustion engine traffic. If you think about, for example, the famous cable cars. And of course, also a city where recuperation makes a lot of sense if you look at the topography. So, and that's also the reason we're here today with the Audi e-tron. And of course, we deliver all the details you need to know in full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. The Audi e-tron will be built in Brussels, basically in a now separate plan for this vehicle and it's also a sign of that they really are serious with building it also in higher numbers so that it's not just a concept vehicle. In the front you can see there is this single frame Audi grille. Basically you see yeah, it could also be on the first side maybe in A6 all road or something but you can see the EV look also that mostly whole the front grille is covered, just a small air intake and this one then behind can also be shut down to improve the wind efficiency. You start with LED headlamps from standard equipment, but you can also get this matrix LED light, at least there where it's available in the respective markets, if it's allowed or not. And this means the matrix LED is especially for the high beam that you have a longer range for that. In the lower area, you can see you have this crossover style look, also with a contrast to this Antigua blue color, which would be, I think, also my favorite for this very car. This is also one of the special first lounge editions with some more extra equipment. We'll also later talk about the prices and what is extra and what is also standard. And I like that they kept the 3D Audi logo, so you have the sensors, you know, very subtly, subtly hidden so that you can also have the assistant systems without going maybe for a 2D logo where you hide the sensors behind it. And then you have also the e-tron shape right there. So the overall concept is crossover-ish and you also have those electric elements but they're not going away where you can say oh this is so much an electric vehicle and it is not standard so it's rather an evolutionary step towards the electric age. 4 meters 90 or 16 foot 1 is the total length of the Audi e-tron and you know they are almost playing all in the same league now price-wise, range-wise and also size-wise if you think about the Tesla Model X, a Mercedes EQC or also the Jaguar I-Pace. Some are you know, a little bit shorter, some a little bit longer but they are approximately targeting basically the same segment. So the rims, those ones here are the 21 inch here today. They will later also be a 22 inch. You can see it also has this wind optimized shape, but you can also get some, let's say, normal rims. If, it really depends on if you really want this more forward looking EV look, or if you want the rather subtle classic look. The same also accounts here for the wheel arches. You will start with the normal black plastic fenders, which then has, you know, more the SUV look. This one here has a contrast but is also um, painted. And then in the S-Line for example, which will be available later, you can also get it in vehicle color. So interesting that here at the e-tron logo we have an electric opening from standard equipment also for the charging infrastructure and here you can see you also have the CCS, the DC charger, which will be available with 150 kilowatts of charging power. So there will be this IONTI network in Europe and they will use the Electrify America network in the US later on. So in Europe we can wait about two, year, two years approximately then it should be also up to date for all the major um, major motorways. And the top one is the AC charger and it starts with the 11 kilowatt charger and option you get a 22 kilowatt and also a special feature on the other side. Because this is now not a magic mirror flip trick in the camera, we're at the other side of the vehicle and we have another charging possibility and I mean for all of you who maybe already have an electric vehicle and um, you know at some point you experience that you're somewhere at a charging station and maybe the cable is not long enough or you have to 
you know, reach it all over the vehicle. So this comes quite handy, although this one here has only the AC, AC charging box, so the DC is just on the other side. It's also the standard side. This one here, the second one, you can get as an option. Another interesting feature, this virtual mirror right here. So it's good actually that you have also less wind resistance with that and also less wind noise when you're sitting on the interior. Then you get an image on the inside of the vehicle and there's a lot of discussion about that. We'll also soon show you again how it looks like when you sit on the inside. Other than that, you've maybe seen again that this car really has some ground clearance. You can get up to about 17 centimeters of ground clearance the air suspension is also standard equipment and this can then vary about 7.6 centimeters in height. So when you drive a little bit faster on the motorway, for example, the car goes a little bit down also to you know, improve the stability of the car. And if you're driving maybe slower, maybe have some soft off-road situations, you can also pull it a little bit higher than to protect the car and maybe not damage the new underfloor cover because this is also part of the con um, concept to reduce the wind resistance as the whole lower part of the car, so below the batteries, which are also placed in the central part of the vehicle, is all covered that the wind can just whew, flow through. So in the rear, the e-tron is characterized by this light strip that goes all the way over the vehicle. It has basically, let's say, a standard estate style here in the very rear, so you don't have to get used to a super special look. And also, again, with a gray contrast in the lower part. By the way, this one here is a matte material. It feels quite well, as actually, you know, just when you touch it. But I think when you own this vehicle, you rather tell those people, please don't touch it. So, and talking about the rear here, this one will also be an electric vehicle where you can also put a trailer on. So the towing capacity is about 1.8 tons, 1,800 kilograms, or about 4,000 pounds. That's exactly the same as we recently had with the Mercedes EQC. Just the Tesla Model X can tow a little bit more. This is about 2,200. Um, but overall, for most trailers, it will actually work. And remember, at the moment, there are just very few EVs on the market that can actually can a trailer, you know, can carry a trailer on the rear. So, um, because for most of those, maybe the range is not enough, or maybe the you know the, the structural rigidity is not uh, not enough. But here, you can actually do it, and you know, maybe you want to go then on a trip with your boat together with the e-tron. By the way, with those matrix lights, you can also get this cascading indicator lights and the trunk you can open right there but also with a foot opening mechanism here we go and you have 600 liters in the back 60 liters in the trunk in the front trunk we'll soon take a look at that so here we go you can also flip the seats right here right and left you have a small step right there towards the floor cover everything also very well built so built quality wise you can see you almost have an even area then. If you put up the head restraints, it gets a little bit flatter as well. And then the lower part can be put up. You can fit a replacement tire if you wish. And then there's also an additional box you can put out. So um, maybe you lose a little bit of height if you compare it, for example, to an A6 Avant, which we've recently shown you. Um, but still, if you look at the width, for example, and also at the length, this is where you don't have any compromise. And the child safety test, let's see how much torque. That's really a lot of torque, so um, maybe the engineers will take a look at that once more. Well, we now we open the front hood and, I mean, there is a frunk in the front, we'll soon take a look at. There's of course no combustion engine, but since we need a spot or a clip in our video where we talk about engines and power, I think this is still, you know, visually a suitable area for that. So the battery capacity is 95 kilowatt hours and you get an official range of about 400 kilometers. And this is already a right realistic figure since they consider the new driving cycle. And so you definitely have more than 250 miles approximately of the range that is basically insured. And this is more than the Mercedes AQC, for example, has and a little bit less than the Tesla Model X. So overall, a quite good figure. And talking about horsepower, you start with about 360 horsepower or an acceleration of 6.6 .6 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And if you use the boost function in the sport mode, you can even boost it up to 407 horsepower and then 5.7 seconds to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And overall then a maximum torque of 606, 
664 newton meters of torque. So that's a lot of figures definitely and also how you get that on the ground. Well, with an all-wheel drive there's no physical connection between front and rear axle but you start with a rear wheel biased all-wheel drive so more power will be on the rear wheels and then also on demand more power on the front wheels and it's really interesting because this one would be rather the classic quattro setup where you have you know um, like a permanent all-wheel drive where also the rear wheel bias focused the new quattro ultra all-wheel drives are more front wheel biased and give also something to the rear but here in the electric vehicle they have rather this rear wheel bias that give you a lot rather sporty experience and of course the acceleration figures are also sports car alike so this is an early production state. This will be somehow structured also on the top part. And then you also have this cover for pedestrian safety that you don't overload the front trunk. And you can, for example, store a cable there. This is um, a converter that you can also use it for the household plug, for example. Just remove it. But you can also use, um, for example, it for your AC cable. Then you also have this floor cover that you can just wipe it clean and, you know, get everything out. And then you have those tire compressors here if you don't have a replacement tire. And if you remove everything, then you will have the total capacity of about 60 liters in the front. And well, you can use it for some luggage or then again to have your rear trunk uncluttered, just put the cables in the front. There will be different colors available. This one here is called Siam Beige. So it's not really white, it is more a cream color. But of course, later on you will have also plenty of other choices. This is the car key, standard audio when we know it. Keyless entry is putting your hand on the outside to close or on the inside and to open. Here we also have a soft close, automatic soft close. Ah, that's an option. Then on the inside we see a very good build quality soft part on the top. Then, for example, Alcantara insert here with LED ambient light, also in different colors available, galvanized buttons for the windows with a nice clicking sound. And of course, those highlights, those are the optional virtual mirrors. And I'm not sure if I can get it right here now. This like, like this, you can see me. And um, this seven inch screen will then give you the the image then from the rear. At the moment we have the door opened, but there will be also different modes. You can also adjust it a little bit to your view and if you're for example driving more than 90 kilometers an hour on the motorway, then it will also have a different angle for higher speeds. So it's basically adaptive, interesting idea and we'll see it when we have the full driving review how that one plays out. But again, if you want the classic choice, you can still get it. The steering wheel has big openings right there, looks very classic like in the A. Eight, for example. There will later on also be an S line, then for example the sportier Alcantara steering wheel. All digital setup, we will soon show you more about that. Let's first talk about the seats. There will be three different seat forms. There will be a base seat that will also start with a fabric surface. Then there will be a sport seat, which is you know, more, you know, because salt bolsters, because that is here, the sports seats we can see. It's a little bit stronger here, also in the lower area. In the S-Line, it will also be available with Alcantara on the inside. And then there will also be a so-called multi-contour seat. This is in the premium luxury seat, with a little bit more room than this one here has. And that one then will be always combined with animal skin. And now let's get inside. Well, you have actually quite a comfortable entry as you have this, you know, crossover style. You can have the electric seats right there. So um, I'm 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1. And when I put the seat in the lowest position, we don't have a panoramic roof. It will be available optionally. So it leaves still plenty of headroom. So also for tall people, no problem. I mean, it's also a large car. The seating position is very comfortable. It will also be a good long-term run vehicle when you then also have a supercharging network, dampened storage area, then electric control for the steering wheel. I'm not quite sure if that one will be standard equipment, but of course it will be available. It um, sometimes also depends on the markets. 
Well, I mean, it is not exactly as in a big Audi SUV, but you also see it a little bit higher than, for example, in an A6. So again, it's something in between as for the feeling. But if you are an existing Audi customer, you don't have to get used to something. You immediately see what is where. And so it's not that it would be a super standout, standalone vehicle. Um, and I think this is probably also the more wise decision to do. Or what do you think? So this is the interior overview, very clean and open. This one here is this aluminum style here, ambient lighting. Very interesting also how it looks like at night. Then you have a 10.1 inch screen on top, 8.6 in the lower part. This is all standard, not optional. And digital instruments also on the left part where you can, for example, change the view as well. So a lot of options to go for. Zoom more details to the screens right there. Again, a very clean cockpit and a standard Audi cockpit if you compare A6, A7, A8, for example. Some news there are, yes, for example, the gear selector have the parking mode right here on the left side, and then they want to have it like a, as a contrast for the electric vehicle to, for example, pick the gears like this, like front and the back to put in the gears. Very interesting uh, to have it for a change. And then this middle console is also open. So you have basically like those grab handles. They want to have a floating design. I think that's maybe a little bit too much over the top, but they want to be a little bit different. Um, I would more prefer standard cup holders right there. Um, there are some here in the lower part, but then you have to you know, reach in there a little bit more and fold them up, for example. It is possible, yes, but you know, I think a more conservative layout would have been a little bit better here. And then this armrest with some room on the inside. And you have two USB ports and also separate button for the camera. You can take a look around in the studio. So the point of view is crucial here. For example, if you take a look at those virtual cockpit instruments, you can change the view, have a GPS map, for example, in the middle of the screen here in the Frisco area. Very interesting. And then if you take a look at the left side, then you have this left monitor for the for this um, you know virtual mirror thing. Again, I would probably stay with the classic monitor. I'm not quite sure, um, you know, how it will work out in everyday driving life. You can see you can also adjust it a little bit, maybe to the um, right and the left, how you want to have it. Um, so there is this possibility. You can see here you can put it lower or higher. Um, hmm. But I'm not quite sure if it makes things really better. Then again, this two screen setup right there, and on the right side the second and you know to adjust it you've also seen on the left part i can actually also pick which one i'm adjusting so i can adjust also this one here then from my driver's side pretty interesting for sure but again i think a road driving test will give more clarification then those pedals of course we have no gears but when we switch those like with minus and on the other side with plus it controls the recuperation so um, you start with zero, that's basically no recuperation, you just roll, which can make sense. Uh, and then if you have the one and the second level, and then you have the maximum recuperation. And Audi says actually that the recuperation will account for about 30% of the total range of the vehicle. And the recuperation capacity is about 70% of the total power of the vehicle. So they say they have a great recuperation and it can even boost the range to more than 250 miles or more than 400 kilometers. They say they could be Tesla. We'll also see that in the real driving test. So this is two screen setup. Again, this is here the, you know, the rear view camera. You also have the 3D view right there. Um, this is an option, pretty cool for sure. And you can, for example, check if you damage the, the rims. The general menu, you see you have either this haptical feedback. This is possible that you really have to press it and get this clicking feedback. But, um, you know, I, I shown you that earlier. Um, for example, you can easily change the language to English. That's quite a good, for example. And you see the, um, the whole menu structure is pretty much self-explaining. Uh, not all of that, of course, um, because when you want this other feedback, um, you know, to, to, to go away, for example, 
head-up display can also be set as a separate head-up display, pretty cool. Then there's MMI, and I tend to deactivate the touchscreen feedback because um, I don't want it, you know. So this way, I don't have to press it very hard, I just can just click it like on a smartphone, and that works way faster for sure. The GPS is also pretty impressive, as it has a fast calcul calculation and a great resolution. Um, sometimes it also depends on the internet connection. So probably it's not the best one here at the moment in the studio, but usually when it has it outside, it works pretty well with the existing cars. It might again be an um, internet connection issue. You can connect your phone via Bluetooth, but also if you put in the cable, then you have the smartphone mirroring function here for the phone apps with Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. In the lower part, you always stick with the temperature. You can you know, do it like this, swipe, or then click. Again, it works way faster if you have deactivated this haptical feedback, also with the seat heating, for example. And then sometimes you also have an interaction between those two screens if you, um, uh, for example, type in a new address, like search, and then um, here in the low part you can either pick, then you want to go to Los Angeles, like LO, for example, or you can also write and continue this, I'm writing an S, S. you know, and then you can go for like, picking the next, look. oh, maybe go to right, right there to the Canary Islands, interesting. <laughs> so, a lot of possibilities, also with voice input um, for the GPS or also for the temperature. Set temperature to 23 degrees. I'll increase the temperature to 23 degrees. So that can help you again for making you know, this whole complex thing again a little bit easier with the voice input. And now let's get inside. Also very easy entry and I have to see as I would be driving and have plenty of leg room left. So that's really good. So good using of the room here for the rear passengers on the outside. Also headroom plenty of room. You have a very spacious feeling. Also for the rear passengers, very, very comfortable. You can, by the way, also flip the seats from here, like this. And there's also this middle armrest available with cup holders. And also, if you just want to have a ski hatch, so you can just flip the middle part. And well, what about this middle console? The electric vehicles don't have this standard middle tunnel. This is also shallow in the lower part, but then again, they added this huge climate console. It does add a luxury feature if you want that, um, you know, with a four zone AC, for example. But again, then it also takes away the room for the middle passenger. You can sit here, but, um, your feet don't really fit. So that is, I think, you know, as a better solution for the Tesla Model X. Um, but then again, if you mainly use it with four people, you can then profit again from this AC unit. And here there's also another interior trim here with a bright beige interior, also fitting to the exterior color we've shown you then. And also different seat form. Those ones are the those multi-contour seats. You see they're a little bit less sporty, a little bit more room they offer. And also different beige interior, but those ones so far only available with cow skin. They lack of sustainable alternatives in the higher trim levels, but at least you can also get a basic fabric trim, at least in Europe. We'll see how it will be in the US or then the Alcantara on the inside for the S-Line seats. to our conclusion for today with the Audi e-tron. Well, for the exterior, they rather picked a conservative approach with some EV elements, but I think it can definitely appeal a mass market and especially the thought that electric vehicles don't have to look so much EV alike because so far the, let's say, conservative setups also work. But you can get some of the more modern elements, so to say. But for example, you know, you can also do 
just pick which classic or rather EV looking rims you really want. About the side mirrors, of course, you can still have the standard ones. That's uh, That will be a, like a, a big discussion also among the customers for sure. Then on the interior, you have very well usable space. So um, especially if you think about other vehicles in this segment, you have enough room. You don't have to have so many compromises. Of course, you lose a little bit of height in the rear trunk. And I think also the rear passenger area could have been used a little bit better that you have a you know, little bit smaller console for the climate unit because electric vehicles usually do, do not need to have a middle tunnel. Driving-wise, of course, we expect the typical very soft air suspension ride, which is, again, sporty at the same time. It has sports car figures as for the acceleration, that's for sure. And since I was already able to drive alongside in this car, I can already say from my experience that the ride was was very satisfying and also, you know, as you used to, also from other Audi products and something between a Q7 and an A6 all-road, then together with a smooth and silent, but yet, if you want, very strong electric acceleration. So, also range-wise, with about 250 miles or 400, uh, 400 kilometers, 250 miles, 400 kilometers, range-wise, I think that's totally fine. So, for most of the you know driving, it will be absolutely okay. Of course, you can always have more, but I think what we criticized a little bit with the Mercedes EQC, that the range was not enough, is actually quite okay here. When it's then combined also with the supercharging network, then you'll also be fine maybe on the, on the longer trips. What is missing is of course that you also get in the top trim levels more sustainable materials for the seats. That's where Audi is lacking behind if you think about the competitors. But again, you can also have some choices as we experienced earlier. So overall, I think it is an EV that will work on the market. That's for sure. Pricing, maybe the last step for today, it will have an entry price of about 80,000 euros, approximately the same also in US dollars. And if you put some equipment in it, you will be something about 100K. That's again also in a region where the competition is also. Well, why are they always going for this segment so far? Of course, you can build an electric vehicle and still have a decent sales margin. And you know the cars which are smaller, for example, and also less in the price, that will, that will come later because, after all, they also need a business case for that. With the new MEB, the electric platform then, in the Volkswagen AG, this one is not on that one yet, but then the smaller cars will also be on this MEB platform, and that's where it's getting really exciting that you also have the EVs for the masses. This one, of course, a very luxurious, exclusive one, but maybe one for you. So share us your opinion, and let's discuss this vehicle in the comments as usual. Thanks so much for tuning in.